Italian. Italia. 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 <laughs> I love the Italia. <laughs> I love the Atelier games and out of the 27 or however many there is at the moment, there definitely is a lot to love, but by far the highlight out of all of them is the Atelier Riser trilogy. I also love the Atelier games and I 100% agree. If you're unfamiliar with the Riser series or the Atelier series as a whole, then we did do a little video on them. So we'll link that in the comments below. But if you want a quick rundown, they're basically JRPGs with all the bells and whistles that us JRPG fans know and love. Turn-based battle system, skill tree, a party, a beautiful art style. And the Atelier games set themselves apart by putting a big emphasis on crafting items. The Riser games take all of the best parts of the Atelier series and make them even better. And Riser 3 is honestly like the pinnacle. <laughs> The, pin the peak of Atelier games. The combat system is super unique in Riser, and it's probably one of the best turn-based combat systems that I've ever played, to be honest. The synthesis is the best and easiest in these games, and since the story has had the opportunity to develop over three games, that is also the best in the series. It's kind of hard to review the third game in a series without going over a lot of what we said about Riser 1 and 2 in our previous video because what, what is it like the se the curse of the sequels? Like they always do worse on Metacritic and stuff because they're not like new and inventive. And a lot of the Riser stuff is the same. So we're gonna go over the similarities. We're gonna go over the differences. And then at the end, we got the juicy gossip of the, of the negatives. <laughs> mm. Juicy gossip. Yeah, mm, the juicy stuff. <laughs> All the stuff that the middle-aged younger moms gossip about. Yes. <laughs> Did you hear about what Liz did the other day? <laughs> Isn't she just such a mole? <laughs> <laughs> In many ways, Riser 3 is still the same Riser that we all know and love. We get to meet all of the same characters again, so the core team is back. Of course, there are some random add-ons that you meet, like when you progress through the story and stuff like that, but Boss, Teo, Lent, and Claudia are all there from the beginning, which is good because their parting in Riser 2 was so sad. The synthesis, the synthesis, the synthesis, the synthesis, it's just as hard to say as freaking Natalia. <laughs> the synthesis mechanics are also pretty much the same. He nailed it. I think it's the most user-friendly synthesis mechanic in all of the Atelier games, so we're pretty glad that it's stayed true to what came before it. Usually every Atelier game would have a different method of synthesizing. So if you want to play them all, you've got to learn all these different synthesizing mechanics. The Riser ones have stayed the same throughout the whole Riser trilogy. They're the simplest, they're the easiest, they're the best. Just fill in the nodes with your items and match the colors with the elements. You can even press R and get it to autofill if you can't be asked learning how to do it yourself. But if you do want to learn it in depth, we covered it pretty extensively in our last Riser video. So check that out if you want. There also hasn't been any significant changes to the combat, which we're also glad about because the combat in Riser is spot on. It is turn-based combat at its core, but it's kind of like a unique blend of turn-based and action combat. First time I saw you playing it, actually, I was like, have they gone full action in yeah. Riser 3? Because mm -hmm. I thought you had, but no, it's still turn-based. It's all in a new mm, I like that. <laughs> it's on a time limit, so you can time your dodges, use your items, switch characters and chain attacks in such a way that it sort of gives the illusion that it is action, but it is still very much turn-based. You can't like put it down and have a toilet break and then come back and still expect to be alive like you can in the more traditional turn-based style. The last major similarity between Riser 3 and its predecessors is part of its map. So all of the locations from Riser 1 are here. There are a couple of random islands that pop up in the lake and form the basis of this new story. So there are a couple of new locations around your island home. Originally, I thought that the islands were going to be the only new places that we got to explore in this game, 
but really I couldn't have been more wrong, honestly. And that brings us to the differences in Rise of Three. At around hour 10, you unlock the first of the new continents. So the map is actually far larger than any Atelier game that's come before it. There is so much world to explore in Rise of Three. And it's also far more open than any of the previous games as well. So in past titles, you'd unlock areas as you would progress through the story. The whole thing was pretty linear. But here in number three, the map is right there, ready for you to explore data. Each continent is like its own open world with no loading screens. So you really could run from one side of the map to the other on day one if you wanted to. But you do have loading screens when you cross continents. So it's not exactly an open world game. It's more like an open zone game like Legends Arceus or something. But the continents are really, really massive. So it's almost open world, but it's not quite there. Yeah, comparing it to something like Sonic Frontiers or Arceus isn't quite fair because it is like way more expansive. It's than bigger. Yeah. But there are still loading screens yeah, in, between in between continents. It's so close to an open world. Mm. There are also some more mounts to collect in this game. Now, Laura is usually the mount fan between the two of us. She does all the mount. But 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 I'm gonna talk about the mounts in Rise of Three because if you like me, you may have thought what is it like to ride a dolphin? Well, my friends, you should play this game because you can find out. So Ryza kind of moves so fast anyway that her sprinting and swimming can easily snag her some gold medals at the Olympics. So I did find the dolphins a little bit redundant in the sense that they like don't actually get you to your destination that much faster, but dolphins, Ride a dolphin, not ride. You always choose to ride the dolphin. <laughs> Duh. So it's kind of becoming like a theme in our reviews and our videos, and it almost deserves like its own section at this point. Like, can you pat the cats? It's actually a really good idea. It is. Yeah. And yes, you can pat the cats. You can pat the cats and you can pat the dogs. And sometimes they give you little presents. Pat him, he'll give you an item. Ah, that's called the Jaws of Death. <laughs> so out of all the differences between Rise of Three and the other Atelier games is the key mechanic. That's right, everyone. There's keys. Wee! It's like, not that great. But it's, it's a thing. So these keys literally affect almost every element in the game. You can create them in battle or from interacting with landmarks on the map. And then you can use them to unlock areas, unlock chests. You can use them in battle to give you stat boosts and in the synthesis mechanic to increase the quality of your items. The keys thing does seem like kind of random and very convoluted since they have like a million and one uses to learn about. But I guess that they are somewhat intertwined with the story. I guess the key was always going to be there and then the devs were like, let's put it everywhere. I don't hate it, but it also kind of reminds me of like terrestrializing in Pokemon. Like it's just a sort of unnecessary yeah. gimmick. It's okay, but it's just kind of there for the sake of it, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry to, if you're a terrestrializing fan, but it's kind of lame. So now that we've gone over most of the similarities and the differences, I guess we did promise you that juicy yoga mum gossip negative stuff at the start. So let's do that. We've got to talk about the negatives because there are some, nothing's perfect, nothing is perfect. So the game does look amazing on the Switch and for the most part, it does perform pretty well, but there are some noticeable frame rate drops and pop-ins, especially in a lot of the more populated areas. It's nothing game breaking or anything, but the past two rises were almost flawless in this regard. So it is worth noting. Also, we can't really comment on the PS5 version because obviously we're not playing that one. But we can only imagine that the more powerful system 
probably rectifies a lot of these issues. Riser 3 also isn't that accessible to new players. I do understand that it must be hard to create the third game in a trilogy and make it in such a way that you don't have to play the first couple of games, but I do feel like they did a really good job of that in Riser 2. I just can't say the same for this game. There are a lot of cutscenes where you would pass through one of the areas from Riser 1 and then your party stops and they're like, oh, remember when this happened here? Or remember when we did that that one time? And like, I do, I do. So that's nice. But if you haven't played those first few games, then you're just not really gonna care. <laughs> remember this? No. <laughs> no, bye. Can we move on? <laughs> so it doesn't add anything new to the story? Nothing new. They're just like reminiscing. They don't even have like uh, flashbacks. There is though a prologue movie that you can watch before you start playing, which kind of runs you through the events of one and two. So that's nice. But honestly, we recommend just playing Rise of One and Two because they are really good games. And it's not like Kingdom Hearts where you got to play like 20 games before you get to number three, even though it's number three. I don't know, that series is that that's a whole jar of worms right there. I feel like every English speaking reviewer is probably going to say this, but there's no English dub in this game. I love the Japanese voice acting, so I probably wouldn't change it personally, but it would help to make the story easier to follow, especially since the text is like really small. I find it most notable when mo I find it I find it most noticeable. <laughs> I find it the most noticeable when the characters are like talking amongst each other when you're in the field or you're out gathering things. Like I have missed every single thing that my party has said while I'm in the field. Mm. Every little bit. Yeah, the text is like really, really small and there is no way to make it bigger. So especially if you're playing docked, it's going to be near impossible to follow. So I don't know if adding an English dub or adding the ability to just make the text bigger is the answer, but I do know that a lot of other people are really looking for a dub. So I guess that's like something else to note. I know that we save most of these like negatives until the end, but let's be honest, they're not, they're not that bad anyways. So it is definitely fair to say that Italia Riser 3 is an incredible end to an incredible trilogy. Not much has changed in terms of the core mechanics, but it didn't need to. Don't fix it if it ain't broke, right? And while there is some pop in and there's some stuttering, it is worth it for that open world and all that extra freedom you have in this game. So our final thoughts on Riser 3, is it worth it? Yeah, 200%, yeah. 100%, 100%. 200%, 200%. yes. <laughs> It's the best Riser game out of the three, and that is truly saying something as well because the first two are mm. really amazing. But we want to know what you guys think of it, so make sure that you let us know in the comments below. And maybe while you're down there, you could hit those like and subscribe buttons because we really appreciate it when you guys do that. Mm. Really helps the channel out, you know? It does. So if you've made it to this point in the video, first of all, thank you. You right there. Thank you. Thank you specifically. You're the best. You might also notice that we haven't uploaded any content in like three weeks. That's because we went back to New Zealand yet again. But don't worry, we ain't going nowhere. We're back with weekly videos for the foreseeable future. So we will see you next week. Much love, everybody. Peace. Ew, get off me now. Gross. <laughs> the facade's over. <laughs> Just joking. That's a mean joke. You started it. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a downward dog. Um, I don't know if it's going to be on. I don't you know how to do here, it. You come here and then you and then oh, you do it. Do it. Uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Thanks that. for objectifying me, Laura. <laughs> Bloody hell. Sorry.